recognize the uh, Hamricks with their Army and uh, Fort Campbell level awards. Uh, for those that don't know the Hamricks history, it is pretty incredible, and I won't uh, take too much away from what will be covered later on, but I do want to highlight a couple things. On Fort Campbell, he served as a squadron sergeant major for 20 months, and after seven months in combat, he moved directly to a different brigade in a different regional command and a different division to do another eight months in combat. And then he served 20 months as the brigade combat team sergeant major. He didn't do that alone. The entire time he did that, Eileen was back here taking care of a squadron and then mid-deployment moving to a different brigade to take care of the brigade. That's not an easy task. It takes a long time to get to know a unit and when you have to get to know the unit under fire in a different location under a different divisional headquarters, that takes a special man and it takes a special lady at home taking care of the units. So we've got a few things to recognize them with today, both uh, Department of the Army and uh, Branch Awards, and then uh, Fort Campbell Awards. So I would ask you to remain seated and remain in the shade. For those out here, voice, I would ask you to publish the orders. Attention to orders. The Legion of Merit is being presented to Command Sergeant Major William R. Hamburg, Jr., 4th Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault. For exceptionally meritorious service as Command Sergeant Major, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault, Command Sergeant Major Hamburg's tactical and technical expertise and professionalism, while assigned in a highly demanding position, made him imperative to the brigade. His warrior ethos, wise counsel, sound judgment, and flawless ability to anticipate upcoming mission requirements were invaluable. His distinguished performance of duty represents exemplary achievement in the finest traditions of military service and reflects great credit upon him, 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault, 3 Corps, and the United States Army. By the order of the Secretary of the Army, this 11th day of June 2012, Donald M. Campbell, Jr., Lieutenant General, USA, commanding. Give him a hand, please. As I said, uh, Sergeant Major didn't do it on his own, so we've got a, uh, a token of recognition for Eileen. Voice. Ms. Eileen Hamburg is being presented the Commander's Award for Public Service for outstanding service to the 4th Brigade Combat Team as the Brigade Family Readiness Group Advisor from December 2010 to June 2012. Your dedication to our soldiers and families was instrumental to the success of the Brigade during the 2010-2011 deployment, redeployment, and reset. Your contribution be brings great credit upon you, the 4th Brigade Combat Team, Kirby, the 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault, and the United States Army. Signed, Valerie C. Keeve Caveney, Jr., Colonel, Infantry, awesome. Commanding. Thank you so much. Give her a hand, please. <laughs> All right, they, they've made uh, contributions clearly in two different brigades and across a squadron and strike and six battalions here. And uh, for those that, that don't know, Sergeant Major Hambrick is a uh, cavalryman. Oh. As much as I could in the last six six months, I tried to infantryize him. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I think he cavalryized me a little bit. But we've got uh, a token from the infantry branch that I want to recognize him with. And then we've got uh, its partner for Eileen. So I'd ask you to wait till we uh, present all of these awards and then we'll give them a joint hand together. So our major order of St. Mary's. Thank you. And one more award for Miss Eileen from the uh, Commanding General of the 101st Airborne Division, the Eagle Service Award uh, for Distinguished Service. I won't read the entire uh, inscription to you, but it is 
not easy to come by and it really recognizes your service across the division uh, considering your impacts over that deployment on the two different brigades. All right, give him one more hand, please. Hey, I'm, I'm I'll hold my comments up there. I'll just say one thing. Uh, guy said a long time ago, one of my motivated soldier put some shine in his chest and we'll push that, give you 100%. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless you. I want to thank everyone for all the awards and the kindness and support that you have shown us at the 101st. 2nd Brigade, 4th Brigade, and just the all-over community. Uh, we will miss everyone. Oh. Bring your units to attention and parade rest. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Colonel Valerie C. Cavey, Jr., Commander of the 506 Regimental Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division, Air Soul, we welcome to today's graduate Regimental Sarah Change of Responsibility Ceremony. Today we gather to give a courtesy farewell to our 506 Regimental Combat Team Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major William R. Hamburg, Jr. As he will relinquish responsibility as the 506 Regimental Combat Team Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Michael A. Grenson. At this time, we would like to extend a sincere welcome to our distinguished guests. Mr. William Hart Harpell, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for Tennessee East and the 2010 champion of Fort Campbell. Ms. T.C. Freeman, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for Kentucky Central and 2010 champion of Fort Campbell. And Colonel Bob Freeman, United States Army retired and 2010 champion of Fort Campbell. Command Sergeant Major Alonzo J. Smith, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault and Post Command Sergeant Major and Mrs. Smith. Mr. Robert Nichols, Montgomery County Commissioner and Honorary Command Sergeant Major of the Regiment. Brigadier General William Pickman, Deputy Commanding General for Support, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. Mr. Phil Hartnell, 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell. Mr. Dick Winters, 2011 Champion of Fort Campbell. Colonel Crystal Toner, Chief of Staff, 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault. The Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is Sergeant Major Terry D. Easter, the Operations Sergeant Major for the 506 Regimental Combat Team. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation which will be delivered by our Brigade Chaplain, Major Mark Morgan. Please pray according to your tradition, I pray according to mine. Father in heaven, we come before you today with grateful hearts, hopeful expectation. We're grateful for the outstanding leadership of Command Sergeant Major Hamburg over these past 20 months. As he prepares to embark on a new rendezvous with destiny, I ask that your hand of protection be on him, your strength and comfort go with him and his family, that he would continue to seek your wisdom in his new position. We also ask today that you would guide and direct Command Sergeant Major Grinston as he assumes responsibility as a senior non-commissioned courier. Pray your hand of protection over him in this position, and you would give his family strength for this challenging assignment. As he leads in this new position, let him acknowledge you in all his ways and look to you for direction. General Patton told us there are three ways men get what they want, by planning, by working, and by praying. I pray that these two warrior leaders recognize the importance of and practice the discipline of prayer. I thank you now for all you've done and are doing in their lives and in the lives of all the currencies in the 506 Infantry Regiment. I make this prayer today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, now approaching is the official party for today's ceremony. The Regimental Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major William R. Hamburg, Jr., and the incoming Regimental Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Michael A. Grinston.
Rainier unit to attention. At this time, two mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, better known as the MRAP Combat Vehicle, are arriving in the viewing area. The MRAP Vehicle is a part of a family of armored fighting vehicles used by the United States Armed Forces. These vehicles are specifically designed for surviving improvised explosive devices, attacks, and ambushes. The first developments in armored vehicles specifically designed to counter the landmine threat took place during the 1972-1980 Rhodesian Bush War, and the technology subsequently matured in South Africa. This technology was adopted by the U.S. Armed Forces in 2006 for use in Iraq and Afghanistan. MRAP vehicles usually have a V-shaped pole to deflect away any explosive glass of landmines or IEDs, protecting the occupants of the vehicle from below. The squad for today's ceremony comes to us from the 1st Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment. They are the winners of the most recent Brigade Best Squad competition. The squad is led by Staff Sergeant Daniel Good from Pope, West Virginia. The members of the squad are Sergeant Jeremy Godkin from Clyde, New York, Sergeant Nicholas Byron from Dillon, Florida, Special James Salvatore from Largo, Florida, and Special Kyle Keeby from Tulalatin, Oregon, and for PSC Christian Cummings from Pembroke, North Carolina. During ceremonies, the commanders typically conduct an inspection of troops. Command Sergeant Major Hamburg has elected to replace this with a pre combat check, a task officially conducted by non commissioned officers. The conduct of pre combat checks and inspections of troops and equipment has historically been performed by leaders at all levels prior to beginning any mission. These checks ensure that the soldiers in the patrol are fully prepared to execute the mission. All the equipment is accounted for and properly secured, and the mission orders are fully understood by all in the formation. Today, Command Sergeant Major Hamburg is performing his final pre-combat inspection as a courier, thus completing his mission as a regimental Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major Crimson will join Command Sergeant Major Hamburg to conduct a pre-combat inspection of the squad prior to assuming the responsibility of the regimental combat team.
Put your units and order arms. At this time, the reviewing officer, Colonel Val C. Cavey, Jr., commander of the 506 Regimental Combat Team, is approaching the official party to conduct a change of responsibility. Command Sergeant Major Hambrick, Colonel Keaveney, and CSM Grinston will pass the non-commissioned officer sword to the War Department in 1840 the unique non-commissioned officer sword. It is a completely functional weapon and not intended for display, but rather for hard, dedicated use. While no longer part of the Army's inventory, American sergeants wore this sword for over 70 years. During this time, the Mexican-American War, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American Wars occurred. The passing of the sword signifies the relinquishing responsibility and authority from the outgoing Command Sergeant Major to the incoming Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Majors may come and go, but the sword remains razor sharp. Sergeant Major Easter, the Commander of Troops, Retrieve the NCO sword from Staff Sergeant Tubin, the Brigade Color Sergeant, who is entrusted with the symbol of the unit. Today, he also holds the NCO sword, the symbol of the authority of the NCO. Sergeant Major Easter passes the sword to Command Sergeant Major Hamburg and final deference to his authority and leadership. Command Sergeant Major Hamburg passes the sword to Colonel Caveney, signifying the relinquishing of his duties and gratitude for the opportunity to care for the Brigade's fine soldiers. Colonel Caveney passes the sword to Command Sergeant Major Grissom. Delegating authority and entrusting him with the responsibility to care for the unit. Sergeant Major Grinston passes the sword back to command for Sergeant Major Easton and the Brigade Color Sergeant, symbolizing his dedication to the soldiers of the Brigade and the continuity of the NCO support channel. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Eileen Hamburg is now being presented a bouquet of red roses by PFC Joshua Evans, the 101st Airport Division Air Assault Foot March Champion, on behalf of the officers, NCOs, and soldiers of the 506th Regimental Combat Team, to express our appreciation for her support to the regiment. Staff Sergeant Goods and his squad are also presenting commemorative coins to their son, Will. His father, William Sr., is also receiving a commemorative coin and a current key night as a 72nd birthday present. The family will be celebrating this together tomorrow. The sort of gifts are being given to the other members of the Grand Sergeant Major Hamburg's family as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Alexander Grinston is now being presented a bouquet of yellow roses by Sergeant Stern, the Brigade NCO of the Year. On behalf of the officers, NCOs, and soldiers of the 506 Regimental Combat Team, to welcome her to the regiment. A single yellow rose is also being presented to Command Sergeant Major Grinston's daughters, Sophia and Isabella.
Ladies and gentlemen, our regimental commander, Colonel Val C. Cagney, Jr. And what an awesome day. On our 70th anniversary, full of ceremony and celebration of the greatness of this unit, uh, we get to cap off the day by honoring a phenomenal warfighter and welcoming, welcoming another phenomenal warfighter. It's, uh, this is another page, another paragraph in the great history of the Currys. Distinguished guests, Curry Hees, family, friends, it's my honor to welcome you to the 4th Brigade Combat Team Change of Responsibility. Your presence honors these great men, and it honors the men represented by the formation of your front. Ceremony is a time-honored ritual to honor the service and sacrifice of a great warrior and his family, and to welcome an equally impressive Army family who will tell, take this unit to the next level. Today, we bid farewell to a seasoned leadership of Command Sergeant Major Hammer and his wife, Eileen, a couple that I am proud to call my friends. It is fitting that we farewell to Hamburgs today on our 70th anniversary. It's an organization that they have come to love as their own over the last 20 months. Many of you know the story of the Currahees through the many series which captured our creation and journey through World War II. People admire that sacrifice, and those that know the remainder of our 67 years admire that sacrifice as well. But that Hamburg story fits especially well in with the history of the 506. They began their service at Fort Campbell in April of 2009 with Sergeant Major Hammock serving as the squadron sergeant major for 175 Cav, the Widowmakers, in 2nd Brigade. In June of 2010, he deployed that squadron to Kandahar, Afghanistan, and personally led them through six months of some of the most intense combat Afghanistan has seen in the last 10 years. After serving in Afghanistan for seven months, the division identified the need to rapidly select a new command sergeant major for the Kurhi Brigade. After a delivered search, Sergeant Major Hamburg was selected to move straight from Kandahar up to Fog Sharana, moving from RC South to RC East, where he would assume the duties as Kurhi 7 and serve for another eight straight months in combat. Sergeant Major Hamburg, in his style, immediately immersed himself in the BCT and set about doing what he does best, truly knowing the unit and ensuring discipline and standards while mentoring NCOs, officers, and soldiers towards mission accomplishment. Currahees throughout history have been known for making the impossible possible, and the Currahees standing before you are no exception. Sir Major Hamrick, there's no doubt that your leadership and example empowered these Currahees to accomplish the missions. Sir Major Hamrick's focus on the mission didn't end with redeployment. He maintained the same focus back here at Fort Campbell through reset and into our current intensive training cycle. Always focused on troopers and their families who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure missions were accomplished, departing soldiers were cared for, New arrivals were welcomed and integrated, individual and family concerns were addressed, and current East standards and disciplines were maintained. It's not by accident that a formation of 4,000 earns and maintains a reputation of accomplishing every mission to high standards. And Sergeant Major Hammer was a driving force behind that. I'll always remember watching him in action. His ability to interact with soldiers, offer professional advice or personal counsel, and mentor an officer or senior NCO within meters of each other is a skill not often found and it's invaluable to our Army. His commitment to our soldiers and their families is phenomenal, and his counsel as my right-hand man has been priceless. Of course, as with any great warrior, he had a great Army spouse who supported him and his beloved unit. I leave. Words are never enough, but thanks for your friendship and for your support of Curry Hee soldiers and their families while deployed and back here at Fort Campbell. You handled the mid-combat tour transition and everything that followed with grace. We can never repay your commitment, but I thank you for all that you and the Command Sergeant Major have done. Though a loss to the Curry Hee Nation, we take solace in the fact that the Hamburgs will move on to a nominated position where Sergeant Major Hamburg will partner with Brigadier General Randy Dragon as they lead the Army's Brigade Modernization Command, the Army's centerpiece for network integration, 
which plays a key role in providing the most capable brigade combat teams to combatant commanders. I have no doubt that our Army as a whole will benefit from the Sergeant Major's leadership and his new assignment. Though this tradition of changing responsibility is meddled with the sorrow of losing a great leader and friend, it's also steeped with the joy of witnessing the arrival of those individuals that are carry us to the next level. Sergeant Major Princeton, Alexandra, Sophia, Isabella, Kimberly and I welcome you. You've built a phenomenal reputation in our Army, and I know that you will do great things for the current nation. You're the right man for this job, and I'm confident you'll build on the achievements of Sergeant Major Hammer and the soldiers in the formation of force. I look forward to serving together as we prepare the Kurdis for our next round of destiny. Welcome to the Kurdi Nation. Finally, to the Kurdis, remember your legacy. Remember the hard work and the many sacrifices that made us who we are. We've got a legendary lineage, but you are who makes us great. Kurdi stands alone, Air Assault. Good afternoon, everybody. A little quick, uh, the Kurdis are going to rest. Let's put the colors down. Put them down. Relax. It's hot here. Okay, uh, real quick, um, this is going to be tough getting through this. So uh, I decided to start off with a joke, all right, uh, to help me set the mood and the tone, and hopefully I can do this without a little cooling and embarrassing myself. But, uh, so I, I decided on a soldier joke because, you know, we're soldiers. And so this joke is really about uh, how, how soldiers like to compete. All right, as the joke goes, there are three soldiers. An Afghan veteran, a Vietnam veteran, and a World War II veteran. Uh, and they're sitting in a song. And as soldiers do, they're sharing war stories back and forth, back and forth. Um, and then all of a sudden there's a beep, beep, beep. And the, the Vietnam vet looks at his wrist and he looks down and he pushes it and he announces everybody that he had a chip put in his wrist, and it was his feet that went off. Um, you know, okay, whatever. So we went back to some more stories, and a couple minutes later, they heard a phone ring. And it was the Afghan soldier. And he picked up his palm and he pushed it. He had a chip put in his hand uh, for his cell phone. So now, the World War II guy's sitting there, and he's still in technological challenge. You know, here he is, you know how, how competitive we are. He's like, these guys have done it, so what, what do I do? So he, he gets an idea, he jumps up, he walks out, uh, he comes back in the sauna, and he's got toilet paper hanging from his backside. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of funny. So, uh, you know, the two soldiers are looking at the gas, like, oh my god, is he going, you know, has he lost it? And he knows he's got it at this point, he looks down and goes, well, you're looking there, it looks like I got cracks coming in. <laughs> I thought it was funny too. All right, distinguished guests, leaders, soldiers, family and friends of the Curry Nation, thanks for attending us uh, today. It means the world to my family and I uh, that you take time out of your busy schedules um, to come and share this with us. Today is a great day for the Curry Nation, uh, the regiment's fourth, uh, 70th uh, birthday and all that that entailed. And now here gathered on the secret ground with these stones with our fallen brothers' names and the regal uh, statues of destiny and majesty, our sculptures ushering in and escorting out the Kurdish past and, past and present. Uh, it's a great place to do this. It's a sad part that I and I uh, pick up and pack up and head out west, uh, but we know that uh, we left the Kurdish in great hands with Sergeant Major Vincent and his bride, Alexandra. So, you know, man, it's going to be tough, but I think we'll be okay, and so will you. So thank you so we can get out of here. All right. First of all, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for giving me the strength and the good health to do what I do. I'd like to thank uh, Lieutenant General John Hamill, Ambassador Scott Schroeder, and Colonel Sean Jenkins, uh, a trio that actually selected me to be Curry 7 and brought me down here. And I'll tell you, uh, I work tirelessly every day not to let them down. To the current uh, Eagle 6 and 7, Major General Conville, Sergeant Major Smith, and his wife, Sandra. Uh, thank you for allowing me to continue my job. Sandra, for being a, a friend to my wife. And uh, Sergeant Major Smith, uh, brother, I think you know how I feel about you. Uh, thank you very much. I can with you anywhere. So our current Ranger, or soon be former Ranger buddy, Cap, uh, Colonel Val Kennedy, and his wife, Kimberly. 
uh, for the last eight or nine months. I got to know you, sir, and I'll tell you there's nothing better. Serving with you uh, has really been uh, the capstone of my career so far. You're an incredible leader, a warrior, uh, and you have an incredible family. And I, Eileen and I are really, really glad that we got to spend time with you. Uh, I'll serve you anywhere as well, sir. So my ops are just It's important to speak about these guys because they take my vision and they take it further. And we have to talk about incredible non officers like Senator Hector Santos, Rob Corrigan, and Terry Easton. Uh, thank you very, very much for putting up with me uh, and my ideas and uh, putting in a lot of long hours to, to help this to be uh, achieve everything that you set out to do. To my, to my Sergeant Major, past and present, Sergeant Majors Judd, Menton, Broadhead, Gardner, Marsh, and Holder. And then my new bright-eyed Sergeant Major down on the field today. Sergeant Major Velez, Christian, Brooks, Johnson, Ortega, Sprinkles. You're all like brothers to me, and I thank you for your boundless energy and support and your dedication to excellence. To my phenomenal first artists, who have the hardest job in the Army, and it really, really make it look easy. Thank you for what you do daily to take care of our soldiers and their families. And our families. Let's talk about our families, our FRGs, our family readiness groups, and our families. The strength of our nation is, is our soldiers, and the strength of our soldiers is our families. Thank you for handling the sometimes thankless task with such toys and grace. For our veterans, guys like Dick Winters, Don Peace, Gene Wilberton, Colonel Sykes, I could go on and on and on. I'm extremely proud of this regiment's uh, relationship with its, with its veterans. They have done so much for us, and they've asked for nothing, and we owe them so much. So, thank you, brother. Uh, once a curry, always a curry. And to my family, here's a hard part. Uh, thank you for coming down from Cincinnati. A special thank you to my father, not only for coming down, but for always, uh, for what he does for me and for his family. It's, it's not often that you, know, you get the chance to publicly thank your parents for raising me. You know, usually, you know, it's just the opposite. You're doing all kinds of things in public that I want to see you do. So um, I'm, I'm very, very blessed to be able to do this today. And more than anyone else, my father uh, is responsible for who I am today. This example of what a man should be has been a clear beacon for my brothers and I. As already stated, uh, he celebrated his 72nd birthday on the 15th. And this weekend at my house, we're really going to celebrate it. And I really just hope that MPs aren't involved on that. But thank you, Dad. Um, and just know that there are no words that express my gratitude, respect, and admiration for you. And to my siblings, Randy, Rhonda, Renata, LeBron, and Rico, uh, thank you for coming down and bringing my nieces and nephews. And, and really, uh, thank you. Uh, you know the real stories, the bad stories. <laughs> Uh, but really, thank you for your support of me throughout my life and my career. I love you all. That's my wife, Eileen, my rock, and the love of my life. Thank you for all that you do to keep our family together and for your understanding that only Army wife can have. You allow me to do what I do, even when it generates a priority shift that puts you not at the top of the list. I ran into a quote uh, from an unknown author that immediately made me think of you, sweetie. It goes as such. And when love, love knows no limit in its endurance, no end to its trust, no fading in its hope. It cannot last anything. Love still stands when all else has fallen. I love you, baby. Now, I had to do that and butter up because I'm, I'm making a pack up and go out west, so. Uh, to my soldiers. That's really what it's all about, right? And you know, if you know anything about me, you know I can go on and on about my soldiers. Um, I could go on and on and talk about uh, the glorious epic battle of our God and those boys, the Fox Company, 2nd of the 506, getting after it and making them pay for even daring to look them in the eye. Or I could talk about the selfless service of Specialist Bird, 68 Whiskey Medic, who gave his life, saving another soldier. But the dedication of Sergeant Castillo, who was wounded, I saw him. When I came back on my mentor leave, uh, he was telling me he wanted to get back to the fight, and he beat me back to Afghanistan to lead his soldiers in combat. To Sergeant First Class Jarvis, a platoon sergeant, uh, whose platoon was ambushed by cowards. Um, 
and he really gave his life to save his lieutenant. Or we could talk about Special Sevens, the, uh, who shattered the Fort Campbell foot march record. Or we could even talk about Specialist Les Salvo, Sabo, the Reg regiment's most recent Medal of Honor recipient, who was posthumously re recognized for acts of gallantry and valor in Seaside and Cambodia on May 10, 1970. These are all curries, all the best of best, and all I like gratitude and love. There's a quote that I ran to from Confucius that really um, sums up the curry spirit. The will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential. These are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Also, individual commitment and a group effort is what makes a team work. That's been some work. He's pretty smart guy, too. Uh, lastly, but not least, let's not forget our wounded, our fallen, and our gold star families. 19 of our curries did not make it back. Their sacrifices are mandated. Our task is but to remember, and we will remember. Once again, thank you all for coming. It's been an incredible journey, and honor being Curry 7. Curry 6, this is Curry 7, ancient sign up in there. Strength and honor, Curry, herself.